Hi everybody, my name is Arthur and welcome to another Pixel Pad tutorial. We are creating our space shooter game and last class we made so we can now actually shoot the bullets and the enemies are being created by the spawner now, right? Every one second. But I want to show you this if I press play now and try to shoot one of my enemies you can see that I start getting a lot of errors, right? Because now uh, my bullet on the loop tab, it is checking for collisions with the enemy. And if it collides with any, any object from the enemy class, it will destroy the game.enemy. But you remember from last class that I haven't, uh, we, are, we are not creating the enemy here on the game anymore who is creating my enemy is the spawner. And then you can you can say, okay, so all that we have to do is change from game to spawner, right? No, that's not how we do it. Because the problem is that it doesn't know which enemy you're talking about, which which enemy inside the spawner, even if, it, if, even if that worked, because this doesn't work. If I, if I try to shoot an enemy, it will give me probably the same error. Yeah, a, a, a bit different error, but it's basically the same thing. This one's saying, I, can, I don't know what enemy is. I don't know what spawner is. So what we have to do actually is we don't have to know where this enemy was created. We just have to know which object from the class enemy we are colliding with, right? We don't have to know who created this enemy. So instead of this code, I can just let enemy here. And before I destroy my enemy, I have to say who enemy is. And I can say that my enemy is the object that has collided with the bullet. And how do I know which object has collided with the bullet? So the thing is, when we check if uh, we have collided with an enemy. This collision check, it returns true if we have collided with an enemy, but it also returns uh, the exact enemy that we have collided with. So I can say, if I have collided with an enemy, give me the exact enemy that I have collided with. So I can say, again, the same thing, collision check, self, uh, like this, enemy. So it's the same code. First I check, is there a enemy that has collided with me, the bullet? If so, give me this enemy. I want to know which enemy has collided with me and then I can destroy this enemy and I can destroy myself, that is the bullet, right? That's all we have to do. So now on the on the game, we can defeat the enemies and we don't get errors anymore because it knows which one is the exact enemy we are shooting. Great, so we don't have the error anymore. We can start defeating our enemies. But now what, we, I, what I want to do now is what we stopped doing last class. That was to set the enemy's position. So let's go to the spawner Oh, I mean to the enemy. And the enemy, once the enemy is created, it is setting its Y position for, to 400. That is outside of the screen on the top. And for now, it's setting the X position as 200. But I don't want that. I want each enemy to have its own X position. To do that, I can just erase this 200. And instead, I want to say random.uniform brackets and here I have to give it two numbers so I can say for now zero zero we're gonna change those numbers so what is this random dot uniform thing so this random dot uniform is a function and this is gonna give us a random number between the number from the left and the number from the right so for now we are using zero and zero so a random number between zero and zero is zero right but the problem is, if I try to play my game, once my enemy is created, 
it start giving me an error and it says enemy has no attribute speed in enemy loop but we know that my enemy has an attribute speed right speed is here the problem is because we cannot use random functions if we not if we don't import them so what do i mean by importing them so the thing is pixel pad doesn't know what random.uniform is unless we say import random at the top of the script we're going to use the random function so we have to say import random to be able to use the random functions so now if i press play you can see that all my enemies are created in the position 0 because i'm saying give me a random number between 0 and 0 all right so let me change this first zero here so this should be a number for the left side so what i what I'm trying to say is give me a random number between the left border and the right border, right? So let's try finding the left border first. If we, if we find the left border, we can just switch the sign off from uh, minus something to something only. For example, if the left uh, is minus 250, the right would be 250, right? But let's try minus 250 let's try minus 250 to see where the enemies uh, can be created right so if I press start now my enemies can be created from minus 250 on the X right until zero so this is the range that my enemy is being created I want to bring this range more to the left so let me try 500 instead of 250 so minus 500 and zero. Now you can see this enemy was created quite far. This was farther than that. This was a little bit farther. And, but none of them are actually touching the left border. So I think if we use 600 here, minus 600, I mean, that should give us a perfect left border. So we should have an enemy or some enemies that spawn around here so instead of waiting and waiting for the luck to generate a number that is minus 600 what i can do i can set both range to minus 600 so all the enemies will be created on minus 600 right so then i can see where this minus 600 is so see that's the exact position that i want and if i put only 600 you can see that is the right position, right? So now if I say, give me a random number between minus 600 and 600 for the X position of my enemy, right? And I stop and play my game. Now my enemies are being created on a random position on the screen. See how it looks nice? It looks way better. You don't know where your enemy is coming from, which is cool. I want to change something. My bullet is pretty slow. I'll make my bullet faster by going on my bullet start tab and I change this number for the speed. Let me try 10. I think 10 will feel better. E yeah, maybe I can even have 15 here. Oh yeah, that's much nicer. I prefer it like that. Nice. So now we have enemies being spawned randomly on the stage. Okay, now I want to start introducing score to the game so then we can actually know how well we did uh, or we have been doing, right, on the game till, we, till our player die or something. So to add score on my game, I'll go to the game class and here on the game class, I want to create a variable score for the game. So I can say that my game dot score so the score of my game is zero because it starts with zero right and then on my bullet so the thing is I want to get scores every time I kill an enemy right so every time my bullet collides with the enemy and destroy the enemy I want to increase my score cool okay so let me stop here I will go to my bullet loop tab and if collision check self enemy so if I have collided with 
a enemy, give me the enemy that has collided with me, destroy that enemy, and before I destroy myself, before I destroy the bullet, so after destroying the enemy, but before I destroy the bullet, I want to say that my game dot score is equals my game dot score plus one. So whatever my score was before, now it'll be my score plus one. So now if I press play, is there any way to know that we're we're getting more scores for defeating enemies? Well, not now, right? We have to display the score somewhere so we can see if it is actually working. So do you remember the print function we used some uh, videos ago? So I can use the same to display my score. So after I increase my score, I can say print brackets. And if you remember, we used something like this, quotes, it's working last time, right? That's what we did. So the quotes we used because if we don't use the quotes, uh, Pixelpad thinks, let me not use this quote here as well. Pixelpad thinks that this is a variable. And when I try to play my game, it says it has an error. It's not on line nine, but I know it's on line seven because I was editing this line, right? So it's trying to print a variable. So there are two errors here. A variable shouldn't have a space. So let's remove that space. And if I press play now, it's not giving me any error because it seems like a valid variable. But when I defeat an enemy, it will give me an error because it says that it's working. It's not def it's not defined on bullet loop. So it doesn't know what it's working is because it thinks it's, it's a variable. So for it to not think it's a variable, we use the quotes. So it can actually print what we wrote, right? So the quotes means that this is not a variable. This is a string. That's how we call it. A string that is basically a word or a letter or even numbers. But now we don't need to print a string like this. We can print the variable because we have the variable game.score score, right? So I want to print my variable game.score. And when, when I say I want to print my variable game.score, this actually is going to print whatever game.score is storing. It's not going to print game.score here. It's going to print probably the name, the, the number that game.score is storing. So if I press play now, if I defeat my enemy, it tells me there one, two, three, four, five. So yeah, it is working. It is displaying my score for me. But I don't want to just display uh, a number because I think that's not so helpful. I don't know what 12 is. What is 12? Do I have I killed 12 enemies? That's my points. Do I have any gold? What is that, right? So I want to say before the number, I want to say score column. So how can I do that? So if I want to print a string, I use quotes. So I can use quotes and say score column and I'll give a space and then the game.score, whatever is, print is stored inside the game.score, right? But if I just try it like that, it gives me an error. It's not supposed to be like this because I have to print score and plus my game.score. So if I have a game.score that is 1, this will print 1 here, or 5 here, or 12 here, uh, 12 here, whatever I have inside my game.score. So I'm saying print the word, or print this string, score, colon, space, plus my game.score. But if I try to play my game, it still gives me an error. But let's read what this error says. Cannot concatenate string and int objects in bullet loop. So the thing is, when we use a plus, it is expecting to have, because first we have a string. So when we use the plus, it is expecting to have another string here. And this is not a string, this is a variable. And inside this variable, we have a number. If we had a string uh, inside this variable, it would probably work. But as we don't have a string inside this variable, we have a number, 
we have to transform this number into a string so we can actually put them together. So to do that, I can just say str and then I use brackets around my game.score and then I have the string score plus game score converted as a string. And now if I press play and I defeat an enemy, I kill an enemy, you can see there on my bottom left that it says now score 1, score 2, score 3, score 5, score 6, score 7. But then you can say that the console window is not the best place to display score, right? Because we have to keep changing where we are looking at. We have to look at the console window to see how much score we have. So that's not a good practice to the player, right? So we want to display the score on the screen and not uh, on the console window. So that's what we're going to do on the next class. We're going to display the score on the window and we're going to add a background to our game and we will get rid of this black screen. All right, so I'll see you in the next class.